My wife and I are campers and have been looking at e-bikes for some time. On our last camping trip, we noticed a couple with Jason bikes. When we asked them about the bikes, they let us know about the cost and their experience. After looking at reviews and comparing bikes, we decided to order a couple. The price for two was less than we would have spent on one e-bike we were looking at previously. After making the purchase and receiving the bikes this week, we finally got a chance to ride them for the first time this evening. We were very happy with our purchase and love the way they handle. We are new to e-bikes and this is our first experience on them. So far so good. I also had written a review a few days ago concerning our experience with the Jason support team and have to say I'm impressed with how professional they handle communication. Catherine was the support person I communicated with and she was wonderful to work with as she took care of our concerns very quickly. Right out of the box, this bike performs admirably. However, I highly recommend having a bike shop through the final adjustments and a test ride. It's a small investment that pays off handsomely. I've had experience with two other bikes from REI and Raleigh, but my journey with a bike dates back to 2010. Having tried both mid-drive and rear-drive setups, I must say the throttle and overall ride feel of the Cost and CE Schwinn surpasses the others. It's exceptionally well-built. Regarding sizing, the chart might be a tad off. I stand at 6 feet tall with a 31-inch inseam, and the small-medium size just fits me. Size chart may be wrong got the small-medium just fits, so you may need an extra small for extra room. On a single charge, the bike covers around 25 to 30 miles, even with a 240 pounds rider like myself, though your mileage may vary. Despite its 8 amp hours battery, which is smaller compared to some others, it packs quite a punch. The metallic red color adds a touch of flair, and the bike feels incredibly sturdy. Coming from a background as a retired bike mechanic, I can confidently say that this Schwinn Cost and CE outperforms my REI City 2.2 mid drive with 700C 45mm tires. The wider 2.6-inch tires handle gravel and street with ease, and the high-quality metal fenders, while silent, are a welcome addition. Surprisingly nimble, thanks to its 275 by 26 tires, this bike exceeds expectations both on trails and in urban commuting scenarios, with speeds reaching up to 20 miles per hour thanks to its throttle. For longer trips exceeding 25 miles round trip, consider investing in the extended battery, which charges relatively quickly. In conclusion, kudos to Schwinn for delivering a top-notch model that's both fun and practical, all at an attractive price point. Having tested and rented over 20 bikes during my tenure at a bike shop in the Bay Area for over six years, I can confidently say that the Schwinn Kostin is a winner. This bike is so comfortable, so smooth, and so easy to pedal without assistance. With the lowest pedal assist, it will take off like a rocket, so be prepared. It rides great on pavement and sand trails. The gears shift smoothly, and I've found taking off in second is perfect for me. I'm 5 feet 2 inches, and my seat in the lowest position, and it is perfect. I love the color. Assemble was fine, and I have never assembled a bike before. I found a video on YouTube for the Schwinn Kostin and just mentally adapted it to my Marshall. The quick-release front wheel was a bit difficult, and I had to take a break then when I went back it snapped right into place, so I have no idea what I did wrong at first except I was tired at that point and just needed the break. The suspension is very tight, and I need someone to help me adjust that but in every other way, this bike is perfect. I have ridden over 30 minutes, using all features just testing it out and the battery light hasn't shown any use yet at all. It charged in an hour upon arrival. The handlebars and grips are very comfortable and the fit between the seat, pedals and bar is perfect for my body. The head and tail lights are bright, and the side frame lights are just plain cool looking but make it where you can be easily seen in the dark. I love this bike. I rode it a little the first day bad weather hit and could hardly sleep because of the anticipation of riding today. This bike is worth the money and the year I spent researching and budgeting to get it. I replaced my trusty cowboy bike with the new Tenway CGO009, and I've got mixed feelings about the upgrade. On the one hand, the bigger frame size and tires provide a better riding position and more comfort, a definite win. The bike feels solid and leaves a quality impression, and the customer service has been top-notch. However, the motor responsiveness has been a letdown. Compared to my three-year-old cowboy, the Tenway's bike feels sluggish, even though it's not slower. 
I think Tinways could improve the Torque sensor responsiveness and boost button with a software update. On a separate note, I've also been using the CGO 600 Pro for my daily commute for almost a year, and I love the smooth ride. When I saw the CGO 009, I was immediately drawn to its sleek design, especially in the beautiful white color. While the bike is nice and the quality is good, I was surprised to find that the motor is actually noisier than the CGO 600 Pro, especially when hitting the 25 km per hour limit. Maybe Tinways can work on silencing the motor a bit more? Overall, I'm still getting used to the Tinways bike, and I'm hoping that some tweaks will bring it up to par with my expectations. I am a reasonably experienced gravel, adventure cyclist, and have had big and premium brand carbon fiber bikes in the past including e-bikes. My last e-gravel bike was full carbon fiber equipped with the Mall Ebicomotion X35 drive system, which is very similar to the Bafong 250W hub drive in the CF Racer 1, even down to the exact same battery capacity. I sold my old bike last year on an impulse and while it was a little bit too big, it was a great bike and I immediately regretted it. However, to buy the same exact bike would have set me back $5,500, and that is about average for a quality mid-priced carbon fiber road gravel e-bike. Fortunately, the CF Racer 1 was exactly what I was looking for, with comparable components and build to my previous bike, and in my size, 50. It almost seemed too good to be true. I was not expecting a bike that was comparable to my previous expensive and much-loved e-bike, but the CF Racer 1 is just as good and in some ways better. The SRAM Rival 1 drivetrain and brakes are top-notch. Reliable and smooth shifting and confident braking including on rough or steep terrain. The hub drive is almost invisible and you can't tell that there is a battery hidden in the downtube. Unless you have the extender installed, which I do, you can't tell this is an e-bike. I had also never ridden a bike with an integrated carbon fiber stem handlebar combo before and it is a revelation. I ride gravel double track and trails including some borderline MTB and the carbon fiber eats up bumps with no need for a suspension stem or seat post. The bike handles brilliantly on both smooth roads and the rough stuff, and it didn't take long for me to trust the bike's confident handling characteristics. You'll get a workout riding up hills but the rear motor makes it possible for average or older road gravel riders like me to keep up with stronger riders on group rides or to get up hills that you might hike a bike on a non-powered bike. Battery range on this bike is exactly the same as on more expensive Mall X35 equipped bikes that are the CF Racer 1's closest competitors. In fact, the integrated sensitive cadence sensor in the CF Racer 1 is better than the cadence sensor in my old X35 bike. On my old bike, the faster I went, the more battery I used, whether I needed the extra power or not. The cadence sensor in the CF Racer 1 provides more power at lower cadence and speed, like when going up hills, and less at higher speed and cadence, meaning it gives you more power when you need it, and less when you don't. The CF Racer 1 is a case study for when a cadence sensor makes more sense for riders, in this case, road gravel cyclists who are used to riding at higher cadence or speeds than a torque sensor. It makes me a happy cyclist, that's for sure. There is nothing like the CF Racer 1 at this price point. Rides and performs like a bike two or even three times the price. Kudos for Ride 1 Up for pulling this off. Not only is it a great value bike, it's just a great bike, period. <laughs>